Good evening, class, and welcome to Moonlight Theater's Back to School Night. By now, you should have all received your syllabus and know that we have a quiz on Chud Theory next Friday. All right, come on. Come on, guys. Don't be so excited, all right? All right, make sure... Hey, you sleeping back there? Wake up. Okay, moving on. Tonight, our lesson centers around a film that failed upon its box office release, but garnered a lot of success when it came to home video, which was a common theme in the 1980s for a lot of films that failed at the box office, but when home video came out, everyone could rent anything, and a lot of movies found cult status on home video, which is why we're talking about this film tonight. Tonight's film is a morbid comedy about the peer pressures of high school, about teenage suicide, and about the deadliness of social cliques in school that not only exclude, but but also maim and kill each other. We're looking at Heathers from 1989. The film was written by Daniel Waters to be a contrast to other teen movies that were coming out in the 1980s, particularly the films that were written by John Hughes. He tried to depict a more dark and realistic side of high school society and imbue it with a lot of dark satire, which really works for this film. The film stars the legendary Winona Ryder as Veronica, one of the popular girls at Westburg High School. And starring alongside her is Christian Slater as Jason Dean, the rebellious outsider, who seems like he got all of his acting inspiration from Jack Nicholson. Uh, I don't know, probably row out to the middle of a lake somewhere, bring along a bottle of tequila, my sacks, and uh, some Bach. How very. I don't know what that's all about. The plot centers around Veronica. She's one of the more popular girls at school, and she's in the popular clique which consists of three other wealthy and pretty girls that all share the same first name of Heather. It's your turn, Heather. Now, Heather, it's Heather's turn. Heather. Sorry, Heather. Heather Chandler, Heather Duke, and Heather McNamara. Hence the title of the movie, Heathers. Make sure you write that down, Tommy. Tommy, write it down! Veronica's tired of being part of this group and all of their BS. The Heathers are your typical movie high school girls. They're rude, they're extremely mean to others, they think they're so popular, they think they're so cool, but they're just plain mean. And we see that Veronica is really not there for all that. Hey, I'm really sorry I couldn't make it to your birthday party last month. It's okay. Your mom said you had a big date. I could probably miss my own birthday for a date. Don't say that. You know what? I was looking around the other day and I dug up uh, these old photographs. <laughs> oh, so great. Come on, Veronica. I was talking to somebody. And then we have JD, who's a bit of an outsider. And he deals with high school bullies and cliques in his own way. You gonna eat this? And what did your boyfriend say when you told him you are moving to Sherwood, Ohio? Answer him, dick. Hey, Ram, doesn't this cafeteria have a no fags allowed rule? Well, yeah, they seem to have an open door policy for assholes, though, don't they? What did you say, dickhead? <sighs> I'll repeat myself. Yeah, so JD's pretty intense, and this might be our first red flag, okay? Make note of this. But don't worry, the bullies aren't dead. They won't expel him, they'll just suspend him for a week or something. He used a real gun. They should throw his ass in jail. No way. He used blanks. All JD really did was ruin two pairs of pants. Maybe not even that. Can you bleach out urine stains? <laughs> you seem pretty amused. I thought you had given up on high school, guys. Never say never. 
And JD's little stunt there impresses Veronica and his ability to kind of deal with bullies, deal with the social cliques, and not really give an F about what anyone tells him. She kind of sees him as a way out of her social group and to escape the holds of high school. Well, everybody's life has got static. Is your life perfect? Oh yeah, I'm on my way to a party at Remington University. Mm. No, my life's not perfect. I don't really like my friends. Yeah, I, uh, I don't really like your friends either. Well, it's just like there are people I work with and our job is being popular and shit. <laughs> Maybe it's time to take a vacation. She is then roped into a college frat party with Heather number one, and the whole thing kind of goes south. Let's do it on the coats, will be excellent, huh? <laughs> you know, I have a little prepared speech I tell my suitor when he wants more than I'd like to give him. Gee, Blake, I had a really nice... Save the speeches for Malcolm X. I just want to get laid. You don't deserve my fucking speech. What's your damage? Brad says you're being a real coos. Heather, I feel really sick, like I'm gonna throw up, so can we please jam now? No. Hell no. <sighs> oh. <coughs> Veronica is really being pushed to her breaking point here of how much she hates Heather. You stupid fuck. You goddamn bitch. You were nothing before you met me. I got you into a Remington party. What's my thanks? It's on the hallway carpet. I got paid in puke. Lick it up, baby. Lick it up. Dear diary, I want to kill, and you have to believe it's for more than just selfish reasons, more than just a spoke in my menstrual cycle. You have to believe me. Then JD ends up sneaking over to Veronica's place and they have a little late night rendezvous. And they kind of vent to each other their mutual hatred of Heather. It's innocent enough, you know? Eh, kinda, maybe? Maybe? Huh? Heather Chandler is one bitch that deserves to die. Well, killing her won't solve anything. Veronica gets an idea to maybe get even with her by making her puke. Get her sick, make her puke her guts out, and call it a day. However, JD decides to take things a step further. I'm a no rust build up man myself. Don't be a dick. Stuff will kill her. Instead of the slightly more innocent idea of making her vomit, JD decides to slip drain cleaner into the cup and ends up giving Heather a cup filled with hull clean. Jesus H. Christ. JESUS CHRIST! Tommy. Tommy, are you paying attention? Yep, Heather is killed by a cup of drain cleaner. Breaks right through the glass table. At least you got what you wanted, you know? Got what I wanted? It is one thing to want somebody out of your life. It is another thing to serve them a wake-up cup full of liquid drainer. Anyone getting any bad vibes from JD yet? No? He comes up with this idea to get Veronica to forge a suicide note in Heather's handwriting. And after word spreads through the school, Heather's apparent suicide is taken as the acts of a desperate teenager who was depressed and, and had a very tragic life. And this makes her more worshipped in death than she was in life. And this kind of backfires on JD and Veronica, now that everyone's talking about her more and more and more. We then get a little glimpse into JD's home life, which you might have guessed isn't the most stable. Hey, son, I didn't hear you come in. Hey, Dad. How was work today? Uh, save the Memorial Oak Tree Society. <laughs> Show those fucks. Yeah, 30 of those 4th of July fireworks attached to the trunk. Arraigned but acquitted. Gosh, Pop. I almost forgot to introduce my girlfriend. Glenn Shaddix from Beetlejuice makes an appearance at the funeral as a priest and adds a little layer of comedy to the scene. It's 
It's pretty heavy subject matter, but they do work in a little dark humor here and there. I blame not heaven, but rather a society that tells its youth that the answers can be found in the MTV video games. We must pray that the other teenagers of Sherwood, Ohio, know the name of that righteous dude who can solve their problems. It's Jesus Christ. Oh God, this is a tragic thing and sometimes I have a hard time dealing with it and stuff. Please send Heather to heaven and all that. Dear God, please make sure this never happens to me because I don't think I can handle suicide. Fast early acceptance into an Ivy League school and please let it be Harvard. Amen. Jesus, God in heaven, why'd you have to kill such hot snatch? It's a joke, man. Jeez, people are so serious. Hail Mary who aren't in heaven, pray for all the sinners so we don't get caught. Another joke. I prayed for the death of Heather Chandler many times, and I felt bad every time I did it, but I kept doing it anyway. Now I know you understood everything. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hi, I'm sorry. Technically, I did not kill Heather Chandler, but hey, who am I trying to kid, right? I just want my high school to be a nice place. Amen. Did that sound bitchy? After the funeral, Heather number two convinces Veronica to go on a double date with her and the two football bullies from earlier in the film. They just end up getting drunk and passing out in a pile of manure. Gentlemen, take notes. And once again, JD comes to the rescue and sweeps her away. However, the two bullies start spreading some nasty rumors about Veronica. What the fuck? Okay, now I rarely listen to Neanderthals like Kurt Kelly, but he said that he and Ram had a nice little sword fight in your mouth last night. You know what I mean? Hmm? <laughs> So, JD comes up with the idea yet again to get some payback on the two bullies and to lure them into the woods and shoot them with non-fatal bullets. Alright, these are Ikluga bullets. My grandfather snared a shitload of them back in WW2. They're like tranquilizers, only they uh, break the surface of the skin enough to cause a little blood but no real damage. They also come up with another suicide note for the two of them, suggesting that they were lovers and decided to shoot each other because they couldn't come out with their love. So Veronica lures them into the woods and then springs the trap. Count of three, guys. One. Two. Three. Did you miss him completely? Yeah, but don't worry, it was worth it just to see the look on. Right, don't move. I'll, uh, I'll get him back. JD goes full psycho mode here and ends up chasing the other bully down. And we kind of see here that Veronica starts to realize that maybe these bullets aren't as fake as she thought. However, when the other bullies chase back, she opens fire and shoots him right in the chest. that time. What? Another gunshot from the woods. Oh, shit. Let's roll. We realized we could never reveal our forbidden love to an uncaring and ununderstanding world. Jesus H. Christ. The quarterback buggering the linebacker. Oh, the humanity. Veronica continues to see JD, but she's starting to become more and more disturbed by all his weird actions. And this guy's really unhinged. He seems to be enjoying all this a little too much. The events caused by JD and Veronica spur other students to follow suit. An overweight student puts a suicide note on her chest and tries to walk into oncoming traffic. She survives, but she is badly injured. And Heather number two tries to overdose with pills, but Veronica saves her just in time. Heather! What are you trying to do, kill me? What are you trying to do, sleep? Suicide is a private thing. Oh, 
together. You're throwing your life away to become a statistic in the U.S. fucking A to day. Now that is about the least private thing I can think of. What about Heather and Kurt and Ram? <sighs> Everyone jumped off a bridge with you. The hysteria starts spreading through the school, everything's going crazy, and Veronica's had enough. Veronica finally tells JD that she's not going to kill anymore, she's, she's done with all this, she wants out. That's it, we're breaking up. What? However, JD doesn't really appreciate that very much and feels that he can't trust her anymore. JD, you are not even listening to me! Nag, 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 nag! He rides to her house that evening and loads his gun with malicious intent. He then finds Veronica hung from her ceiling. Yeah. And through a villain type monologue, he reveals that he wants to bring a bomb to the school during the pep rally and kill all of the students and make it look like one giant mass suicide. JD is completely deranged. I can't believe he did it. I was teasing. I loved you. I'm sure, I was, I was coming up here to kill you. However, Veronica, being super clever and smart, managed to fake the hanging. She shifted the weight just enough so that it wasn't around her neck and that it was more around her waist. Now it's up to her to stop his plan. JD plants the explosives at the pet rally, but is then confronted by Veronica. We get a really good final duel here between the two of them in the boiler room. this thing you can end it? I'll kill you, I'll fucking kill you, I swear to God. How do I turn off the goddamn bomb, asshole? Fuck you! Shit! <laughs> it's all over, JD, help me stop it. Veronica ends up shooting JD and stopping the detonator. She then exits the school, but JD isn't finished yet. He gives one final speech, but then ends up blowing himself up, putting an end to his crazy killing spree. A highly entertaining film, but also a very dark one that covers some serious, serious subject matter. I think that this film is very good, and I highly recommend checking this one out. Heather's has since then been adapted to a highly successful musical, which I think more modern audiences are familiar with. I've been running into people who know the musical, and they didn't even know what the movie was. They just know the musical, so... Well, that about wraps up class for tonight. I hope you enjoyed Heather's, and I hope you took lots of lots of notes, because we will be quizzed on all of this, Tommy. Seriously, man, what the fuck? October is right around the corner, so if you haven't, subscribe to the channel, and if you already are, stay tuned, because we have lots and lots of horror programming coming up in October to get you ready for Halloween. And we have a lot of surprises in there, too, and special, special things that I can't reveal at this time. So, enjoy your weekend, and class dismissed. Except for you, Tommy. You gotta wash, you gotta clap these erasers.